Hi grade 11s, welcome back to my YouTube channel and in today's video we are going to be discussing the nature of roots. As you can see I had quite some fun doodling some trees over here because when I think of the word roots I'm thinking origin or roots of a tree. Okay, um, before I start with the mathematical part of it, let me explain what I mean. Okay, so give you a new, uh, uh, a more clear understanding of what we're about to do, right? I'm going to use soccer as an example, right? I think even if you don't like soccer, you have a general understanding of soccer. Let's say we have the Spanish um, national team playing against our country's beloved Bafana Bafana, okay? Without even watching the game happen, you can already make a prediction about who's going to win. And my guess is you thinking Spain is going to win. And the reason why you think in Spain is going to win is because you've seen Spain play before in the World Cup. You've seen the kind of players that they have. I actually don't know who's in the team right now. It's been a while since I, I myself followed soccer. But we know that Spain, based on the statistics in previous games, we know that Spain has a much better team than what our country's Bafana Bafana is. Could be wrong. But anyway, what I wanted to say is when we're working with the quadratic formula in mathematics, right, and I've written that all down over here for you, it helps us determine the roots. Now we, it, it actually works out the roots. So we get x equals something, x equals something else, okay? But let's say we wanted to just find out what type of roots they are, not what the actual roots are, just what type of roots they are. And by this I mean what type of numbers they are. Now remember in grade 10 we learned about the number system, you actually learned it in grade 8 and 9 as well, but it's in the grade 10 syllabus, right? And in the syllabus we learned about real numbers, non-real numbers, we learned about, oh and just non-real numbers, if you were in my class I said there's like a whole heap of numbers on your desk and you separating them up and I said imagine there's the whole complex number system and then you split them up into real numbers and non-real numbers and we spoke about what's a non-real number, non-real number is under a square root if there's a negative, okay so you can pause the video Take out your calculator and type in square root of negative 5 and then see what your calculator says. All right? Um, okay, if you unpaused it now, you would see it gives you math error on your calculator. That is a non-real number. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means it exists in another number system. And then in school, we mostly work with the real number system and that real number system is what we plot on the Cartesian plane. We plot all of our different graphs on that Cartesian plane and then from the real number system we split it up into even more things which is rational numbers, irrational numbers. Okay, I'm just reminding you really quickly what's a rational number. It's basically all your fractions, okay, as long as there's no swords in there, all your fractions, positive and negative ones. It's all your recurring decimals and it's all your decimals that can stop, so terminating decimals, okay? And then what's your irrational numbers? Those are all the thirds and all the decimals that continue forever. So the non-terminating decimals, right? And then we split up into, excuse me, we split up into whole numbers, natural numbers, integers, all of that, okay? But for this nature of roots, you just need to know real numbers, non-real numbers, rational numbers, irrational numbers. That's what you need to know, okay? Right, so I'm going back to what we were saying about these nature of roots. If, without calculating the actual roots, if I wanted to know what type of number they are, I can use this formula over here, or well, this part over here of the quadratic formula. It's called the discriminant. It's um, b squared minus 4ac. And this here, if I substitute the b value, the a value, and the c value, it'll be able to tell me more about what type of numbers I have. Okay, so I've summarized it over here for you. And let's quickly just talk through them. So if this discriminant amount over here, when we sub it in, okay, I have a few examples here, I'm going to show it to you. But if you substitute into this discriminant part, and your answer that you get is less than zero, meaning it's a negative number, you should be able to tell me that the roots are non-real. And that makes sense, because let's go back over here. If I have a negative in, under the square root, you already just practice that or typed it in on your calculator and you see it gave you math error and we just discussed that that there is a non-real number. So there we go. If 
when you work out this discriminant, it gives you a number that's greater than zero or equal to zero, you can conclude that it's real. Now we go one step further. If that number, so if it's real, okay, if that number happens to be exactly equal to zero, we can conclude that the roots are real. We already discussed that here. On top of them being real, they are rational. And on top of them being rational, the roots are going to be exactly the same amount. So they are equal. Okay, let's continue. If you worked out your discriminant, okay, and it happens to be a perfect square number. So what are your square numbers? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 81, 100, 144. Those are perfect square numbers, okay? So if it works out that it's a perfect square, the numbers are, the roots are going to be real. They're going to be rational, but they'll be unequal. Now, don't get confused between unequal and irrational and non-real. It's very common. People mix all of those things up. Unequal just means that one root is going to be x is equal to negative 3, and the other root will be x is equal to positive 3. That's what we mean by unequal. Okay? Let's continue. If this discriminant works out to something that is not a perfect square, that's why I put a line through the equal to sign, the roots are still real. So they can be plotted on a Cartesian plane. They just are irrational. Again, don't get confused between irrational and non-real. Irrational is just a solid. Let me give you an example. I'm going to type an irrational number on my calculator like this. This is an irrational number. Okay, it still exists. Okay, it's not saying math error. This is existing, right? It's just on a different, um, what says it's going to be a third, meaning it's going to be a whole lot of decimals. If I did this, this here is math error. This is a non real number. Please don't get confused. Lots of people do. Okay, and lastly, these roots are going to be unequal. Now, you guys are familiar with all of this because by now you should have learned the quadratic formula. You played around with it. You subbed in. You should know it off by heart already. Okay, and you would get some answers where it says 2 plus root 3 over 5. And then the other one says 2 minus root 3 over 5. That is what that unequal means. One is positive, one is negative. Or they're just two completely different numbers. And that's what you need to know about nature of roots, okay? Let's do some examples on how we can question you in this. The one straightforward one is we're going to say describe the nature of roots. Now, when we say this, we don't want you to actually work out the roots. We want you to use the discriminant. So see, I wrote down the formula, b, b squared minus 4ac. I take the b value. Can you see this is in standard form? Very important in standard form. You take the b value. There it is. I put it in brackets. You take minus 4 the a value and the c value i put it in brackets i typed it in on my calculator it gave me a negative number we already said if it's a negative number roots are non-real so i wrote the delta is a uh, discriminant less than zero therefore roots are non-real we've described the nature of roots that's it okay let's do this one i gave you x squared minus four or uh, five x plus six so without working it out I'm subbing into b squared minus 4ac. Do you see my brackets? Please, the brackets are very important. Because let me show you. Let me pause in for a second. This. Okay, do you see with the bracket? Positive. If I did not put the bracket, it means that it's just squared in the 5 and then it's going to put a negative in front of it. And then it gives me negative 25. So be very careful. If the number here is negative, please, when you sub in, whenever you sub in, not just your nature of roots, whenever you sub in, okay, please use brackets so that you don't make a mistake. I subbed it in. I worked it out. It gives me 1. Therefore, it's a perfect square. 1 is a perfect square. And if it's a perfect square, here's it written real, rational, unequal. The roots are real, rational, unequal. Let's do a few more examples quickly. So same thing that's happening. I just wanted to show you how I'm actually doing it. Delta. Make sure it's in uh, standard form. I'm saying delta because of the science students. You guys know about uh, this triangle meaning delta. Here we say discriminant, okay? B squared minus 4ac. What's the B value? It's here in front of the X. So 1, 1, 1. This here gives me a 
negative number. And if it's negative, Okay, I should have just wrote this here. This part here that I'm writing right now, not necessary, but I would suggest you guys get into the habit of writing it just so that you, you understand what you're doing. But if you know it off by heart, you can just write this part. This is the important part. Okay, next one. I need to get it into standard form. Discriminant. B value, A value, C value. You see what type of number is 16? 16. 16 is a perfect square. Roots are real, rational, and unequal. Next one. I want it in standard form. So I just took everything to the other side. Discriminant. Sub in P value, A value, C value. zero. If our discriminant is equal to zero, it means roots are real, oops, are real, rational, and this time they are equal. Okay, almost done. Well, with the examples. Cut everything to one side. B, A is 1, C is negative 9. Okay. This time it's a not perfect square. Are the roots real? Yes, they are. Are they irrational? No, they are irrational. But are they equal or un unequal? Unequal. There we go. I've described the nature of roots. Got one more example here. Okay, I just put in a square root so that you can see that the A value is 7, the B value is negative 2 root 7, and the C value is 1. So it doesn't matter what's in front of the X and what's in front of the X squared. You consider those as your A value, B value, C value, okay? So... P value as is and I'm going to type it in exactly like gives me zero therefore real, rational, equal, because it's equal to zero. And that's what you need to know about nature of roots. So we've described it, okay? 
we can't possibly ask it to you the other way around. We will tell you the roots are real, rational, uh, unequal, I mean equal, determine, and then we might change this, this value over here to a variable or whatever. You just have to substitute in and walk backwards, okay? But I will send you guys some questions a little later about that. I want you to first understand this very carefully, okay? Now, anyone who's watched my videos before or you've been in my class before, you know that I like to link things to something that is visual, okay? Because I keep saying I'm a visual learner. I like to see what this means. So, if I had to represent a quadratic, so let me write down a quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c, as a graph. Let's recap on the graphs that we know. We know the straight line graph, okay, so it's a linear one. Let me grab a piece of paper to scribble on. Okay, let's just scribble on here. The graphs that we know. We know a straight line one. It's like that. It has a formula y equals mx plus c. Does that match what we have there? No. So we know it's definitely not linear. If I had to draw a parabola, we get a smiley face parabola, sad face parabola. It has a formula that we learned from last year, ax squared plus q. Okay. Then we have a hyperbola. Let's draw a Cartesian plane. It looks like this. Or it looks like this. Right. And it has a formula that looks like this. Okay, right? And then you guys learned the exponential one as well. It looks like that. And then the other way around as well, okay? It looks like that. Sorry, this is divided in half. Two different Cartesian planes. But it has a formula that looks like this. These are the ones that you learned. And then you learned trig ones, but we're busy with algebra, so it's these four. Which one of these match up to our quadratic over here? Yeah, I'm going to sound like Dora the Explorer, hey? I'm asking you guys a question and you have to answer me. It's this one over here, okay? They match up. It's just last year, you didn't learn the B value in here, but this year matches with this. So that means visually, if I'm drawing these, um, if I'm representing any of these equations over here, I'm going to get parabolas out of them. So we understand that. We've established that. Now let's discuss what would happen if we had no real roots. I drew out a little tree over here. You're going to listen to my example. Hopefully it will help you. Let's say it's a magical tree, okay? If it has, if this tree has no real roots, okay, you agree with me it would either be floating up here in the sky like that if it was a smiley face one or if it was the other way around if this is the ground then it would be this way around if it had no real roots let's okay, wait let me uh, ignore what i said there one second let's say we're working with smiley face graphs okay so ignore the bottom let's make that the ground the ground the ground let's say it's only smiley face so if it had no if this tree had no real roots it would be floating up in the air like that okay it wouldn't touch the ground at all. It has no roots. Okay, establish that. So if I had to draw a parabola that was floating up in the air, it would look like that. Okay, it doesn't touch the ground at all. No roots. Okay, what happens if we have our tree that has only one root? How many times does it touch the ground? If your answer is one. You are correct. It's touching only once because it only has one real root. Meaning if it was a parabola, it would touch the ground once. And if our magical tree over here has two real roots, how many places is it touching the ground? Two times. One on that side, one on that side. So if I had to draw my parabola, one on that side, one on that side. I hope that this video helped you understand nature of roots. I will make a follow-up one a little later where we discuss the more complex questions on nature of roots that I mentioned a little earlier with that example. Hope that this helps.